everyone, I have a disease called Bartonella and it fucking sucks. My name is Jake, like the boy's name, and I have been disabled for almost a year now. I can't go grocery shopping. I can only really walk around the house a little bit. Luckily, I can still shower and I did that for you today. And I can't stand long enough to make my own food. So my mom has to do basically everything for me. And I spend a lot of my time in bed just watching TV and it's, it's awful. In the summer of 2018, I moved to Santa Monica because I wanted to just live in one place and start my adult life. And I also wanted to re-embark on a child acting career I had from age 8 to 13. This is my first headshot. I was on the Nick Cannon show, you guys. How cool is that? I got a side job in a restaurant. But what I didn't know is that while I was a host in a restaurant, my body was a host for the Bartonella. So while I was a host, I was always trying to bogart this memory foam mat that was behind the host stand because it felt like each shift, my feet were getting more and more sore. But then our general manager wanted to attract more business. So he had the bright idea of hanging the hostesses outside the front door like we were fucking chum. And I had to stand on cement. So I asked if I could put the memory foam outside on the cement and he told me to get more comfortable shoes. I'm wearing grandma sketchers, you asshole. Even these didn't prevent the inevitable, me having to quit my job because I couldn't walk around my 20 by 20 apartment. My feet were in so much pain, it felt like someone had taken a baseball bat to the bottom of them. My feet just felt like old rubber bands. I thought I had tendonitis and I thought I was just getting old. Old at 25. I called my mom and told her that my feet had gotten so bad that I was crawling around my apartment and she needed to come pick me up so I could move home temporarily. And even though it was just my mom, I was so embarrassed because I had dirty dishes piling up, clothes on the ground. I even had trash laying everywhere because it hurt too much to walk. I still feel embarrassed now, even though I know I shouldn't. But most of all, what I felt back then and what I feel now is scared. The pain then spread from my hands and feet to my forearms, my elbows, my back, the backs of my legs, pretty much anywhere where I either use my muscles or I lean against them and there's pressure from sitting or lying down. Even when my mom's 12 pound dog leaned against me, it hurt. Let me introduce you to my mom's dog, Piper. Mwah. I call her Bubs. As the pain spread, I developed dozens of new sensitivities to both food and medicine that would manifest as huge burps coming up or lip blisters that opened up into ulcers and at one point got infected. And it was green and bloody and pussy and I could smell the pus because my nose is right here and my lip is right here. I saw 17 doctors and I got diagnoses ranging from fibromyalgia to it's all in your head. And that one really pissed me off and it still pisses me off and it really hurt my feelings. And the fibromyalgia diagnosis didn't really make sense in the context of my severe reactions to both food and medicine. But mostly, doctors really didn't have an answer for me. Actually, it was more like each doctor had a clue and I was the one that had to figure out the next step, which was the most overwhelming thing for me. Finally, a doctor diagnosed me with two strains of Bartonella. And I have to admit, when I got the diagnosis of Bartonella, I was a little bit skeptical because if you Google it, what will mostly come up is cat scratch disease. But that's a bit of a misnomer because you can get it from fleas, sand flies, and other vectors. You will also find that it is frequently described as a self-limiting disease, which means that most cases will resolve within a few weeks with or without treatment, which is taking antibiotics. It is because of this dominant understanding of Bartonella that I had such difficulty getting a diagnosis. But if you do a little searching on Google Scholar, which is evidently way too hard for most physicians to do, you will find there are many cases in the literature of atypical Bartonella infections that manifest with rheumatologic or neurological symptoms. These include fatigue, headaches, joint pain, numbness and tingling, disorientation, and encephalitis. Some people experience psychiatric issues like irritability, depression, and panic attacks. And those are just the greatest hits! And back to my unexplained sensitivities to food and medicine, that can be explained by mast cell activation. Mast cells are an important part of the immune system that can be found all throughout the body, but are especially prevalent in the places where your body has an interface with the outside world. So that includes your skin, your genital urinary tract, and your GI system. With a prolonged infection, mast cells can get out of whack and start reacting to things that they shouldn't be. Mast cell activation is super hard to control, but there are several classes of drugs and supplements that can help, including antihistamines. 
I also follow a low histamine diet, which has been a lifesaver. Treatment for Bartonella doesn't really have a lot of research behind it, but it involves a combination of antibiotics for many months. It is borne out in the literature that people with disabling symptoms of Bartonella have taken long courses of antibiotics and have made full recoveries or near full recoveries. Some people use more out of the box treatments like herbs, supplements, homeopathic remedies, and they use this either in conjunction with antibiotics or on their own. I want this channel to raise awareness about atypical Bartonella infections, and I want it to be a place for people with Bartonella to learn about treatments, hurdles, learn about hurdles. Book! I want this channel to help raise awareness about atypical Bartonella infections, and for people with Bartonella to learn about tests, treatments, and to be able to connect with others. Bartonella is best known in the Lyme community, and I want to take it out from underneath that umbrella, because I'm proof that you can have Bartonella without Lyme disease. Umbrella and Bartonella rhyme! Book! So tune back into my channel for the good, the bad, and the ugly. There's no good. So the bad and the ugly about Bartonella, and thanks for watching! I had dirty dishes, dirty dishes, <laughs> dirty dishes.